Hello, good morning, church. Welcome to Victory Puerto Princesa. And um, can we invite you to all stand up as we worship our God? And before that, um, I would like to uh, read from the verse uh, from Psalm 149, verse 3 to 4. Let them let them praise his name with dancing, making melody to him with tambourine and lyre. For the Lord takes pleasure in his people. He adorns the humble with salvation. So as we dance and as we sing, let us worship the Lord this morning. Come on, church. Let's give him a praise today. Nothing is impossible 
nothing, nothing, God, nothing so possible to you, Lord. Yes, God. Heavenly Father, we acknowledge that you are sovereign over everything, God. God, thank you because no matter what we go through in life, we can be assured that we will overcome it as you have overcome it at all, God. God, because of, Jesus, because of what Jesus has done on the cross, Panginoon, we can declare that we are victorious, God. You have won it all, Panginoon. When, when darkness overwhelms us, Panginoon, we will look to you. We will trust in you, Panginoon. Thank you, Jesus. Let your kingdom come. Let your will be done here on earth as it is in heaven, Panginoon. We praise you, God. Thank you, Jesus. We worship you.
Oh, 
holy and you are awesome, Lord God, and nothing compares to you, Father God. And we just um, thank you for, for saturating this place in your presence, Father God. Thank you, Father, for lifting us up, Father. After a long week, Father, whatever na pinagdaanan nyo this week, um, kung ano man yung mga binibitbit nyo the whole week and right now, um, God is just encouraging you. This is another day. Tomorrow is another day. And God is still the same God who is faithful to you yesterday. He is still faithful to you today, tomorrow, and at the ends of the earth, Lord God. We just, Father, um, we just lift up, Father, this time, Lord God, of our praise, of our worship, Father. We lift, Father, yung, yung dinadala namin ngayong buong linggo, Lord God, at yung mga dadalhin pa namin ngayong buong linggo. We just lay it down to your feet. Lord God and Father we just um, give you Father the wheels Father let us um, let us uh, let the God let Jesus take this burden from us let just yung, yung trust natin sa Kanya every day every hour of our lives Lord God thank you for giving us Jesus who took um, who took the blame for us, Lord God. Thank you for giving us Jesus, Lord God. And we can worship Him right now. And we can worship you right now because of Him, Lord God, freely. Lord God, uh, thank you. We just lift up, Father, all our cries, all our worries, Father, in the next days. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let us just give applause to our God, Lord God. You are so holy, Lord God. Thank you. Okay, so before tayo umupo, we can look around and kung sino pa yung mga hindi natin kilala, we can ask these three questions para makilala sila for one minute. Ayan, good morning once again. Good morning and welcome to Victory Puerto Princesa in our 11 a.m. service. And I am Gian, one of the leaders here. And we, we love doing things here in Victory. We love to honor God and make disciples. And as we make disciples of our next generation, these future leaders need multi-generational multi community uh, that will believe and invest in them. So our church is committed to empowering them to live out um, God's purpose. So let us watch this video. More than just finishing education, our joy is to see our real-life scholars encounter God, grow in community, and live out His purpose. Through real life, God has given us the opportunity to shape the course of their future from their humble beginnings. Be blessed to hear how God miraculously restored what Kimberly thought she has lost forever. Hi, I'm Kimberly Valles. I'm a real life alumna. I grew up in a broken family. I grew up with my grandfather, with my two aunts, and my cousin, and when I was able to understand the whole story, it's very, very hard growing up telling people that if they'll ask me, saan, saan yung papa mo? And then I'll tell them, hindi ko alam. So bitterness and forgiveness was in my heart. Even though you get love from other people, but still it's quite different to get that love from your parents. I even came to a point that I really said, I really hate him. I will do my very best to get revenge. 
because I don't deserve this. And it turns out that it's really like a very bad kind of motivation, which is to take revenge. God used real life at that time to be really a vessel of blessing to me. But most especially, I was able to know Him more through coaching. I was thought about how to be a leader when it comes to my integrity, excellence, and most especially, my faith towards God. And one thing that I can't really forget about is forgiveness. I was taught by my coach and a lot of people. I was taught to read my Bible through prayers, to realize. And one thing that I can really say, it's just because of His grace and love that I was able to do it. I decided to, for, to forgive my dad. I was able to reconnect with my dad and had a communication with him. I was really able to confess what I really feel towards him at that time. He cried and he even said sorry. At that time, I know it is really God who orchestrated things to touch his heart and I know it is God who changed my heart. And I'm very happy to tell this. I am very grateful, thankful to God and how He redeemed my life and my family. Currently, I am an ESL teacher teaching English to Korean students. This platform I have right now is my one way also of sharing how good God is as our dad. Thank you for all the people who partner in real life. God changes our lives. For us to reach our dreams and goals in life together, together with our families. Thank you so much. Madam Mugid nga salamat. We have the privilege to usher these scholars toward their God-given destiny and receive God's love. Thank you for your continued partnership. His compassion is greatly felt through your generosity and care. Let's all be part of what God is doing to change the life and change the nation. Ayan. Galing naman. So, yun po ang ating real life foundation. So, thank you so much for uh, uh, supporting and uh, showing genuine love and care para sa ating mga scholars sa real life. So, sa mga nagbigay, thank you po sa inyong lahat. And we, uh, we hope na... Uh, we will see the change in our students and eventually in our nations. Yon. For the next announcement, we will be having our Victory Weekend. Okay, so agagawin po ito sa September 16 to 17. So Victory Weekend is a two-day retreat na ano, uh, we just encounter God. So yung mga nakatapos na ng mga one-to-one, -one, sila po yung mga po pwede nang pumunta doon sa Victory Weekend. So Kung gusto nyo malaman kung ano yung one-to-one, -one, you can ask your leaders, yung victory group leaders ninyo, what is one-to-one. -one. And eventually, siguro, we can see you on our next victory weekend. Okay. So, our next is Love the City. So, our singles community. Woo! Mga singles dyan. Um, we will be conducting our Love the City sa Bahay Pag-asa on August 26. This is a Saturday. And... Uh, itong Bahay Pag-asa is um, a youth rehabilitation center for children at risk and children in conflict with the law and group uh, group homes for abused children. So this is the uh, these are the children that really needs our love and our support. So kung ano kung gusto niyo po na magbigay, we're receiving donations for school supplies, uh, uniform, shoes, toys, and of course yung meals and snacks for those event uh, for that event. So kung gusto niyo po magbigay, you can put your uh, yung nakalagay sa ano ninyo, sa envelope ninyo, you can specify na you're giving for the love the city or kung meron pa kayo ibang questions and you want to know about the details, you can ask our uh, administration booth or administration booth dun sa labas mamaya pagtapos ng ating service. Okay, let's move on to our giving. Let me encourage you um, from Philippians 4 verse 18 to 19. I have received full payment and more. I am well supplied having received from Ephaphroditus the gifts you send, a fragrant offering, a sacrifice acceptable and pleasing to God. 
And my God will supply every need of yours according to his riches in glory in Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Um, Father God, we just thank you for this time uh, in honoring you through this uh, offering that we have right now, Lord God. We pray, Father, that you will continue to give us and show us breakthroughs in our finances, Lord God. And we pray, Father, na these people, Father, uh, we will be a blessing, a channel of your blessing, Father, sa mga, mga nangangailangan din, Lord God, sa paligid namin. And thank you because um, as we receive, Father, this blessing from you, this blessing will also be uh, the, the channel, Father, for us to be generous, for us to open our hearts in giving to others, Lord God. And this we pray in Jesus' name, we pr amen. Good morning, church. Good morning, everyone. Yon, excited lahat marinig ang word ni God, and that's good. Welcome everyone to Victory Church, Puerto Princesa, and um, it's so uh, it's so good to see you here today, this very fine morning. And I'm so excited and privileged to be preaching God's word for you this Sunday. And I want to just right, get right into the word for today so that we can um, jump right in and get started. Medyo mahaba-haba yung ating preaching kasi ang dami kong slides. But so that being said, let us, let's get right into the word. And if you are able to, uh, can I ask you to please stand up as we give reverence to God's word this morning. And um, let me invite you to open your Bibles to Exodus chapter 3. So we're going to be looking into the book of Exodus. Yeah, and, and we're going to be um, we're going to be entering into a new sermon series and we're going to be in the book of Exodus all throughout this series. So open your Bibles to Exodus chapter 3 verse 7 to 12 and I'll be reading from the NIV version. That's the 1984 version. So if you don't have your Bibles with you, They'll be flashed here on the screen. So the Lord said, I have indeed seen the misery of my people in Egypt. I have heard them crying out because of their slave drivers, and I am concerned about their suffering. So I have come down to rescue them from the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up out of that land into a good and spacious land, a land flowing with milk and honey, the home of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, Perizzites, Hivites and the Jebusites. In verse 9, And now the cry of the Israelites has reached me, and I have seen the way the Egyptians are oppressing them. So now go. I am sending you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? And in verse 12, And God said, I will be with you, and this will be the sign to you that it is I who have sent you. When you have brought this people out of Egypt and you will worship God on this mountain. This is God's word. Lord, thank you for your word. I pray, Lord God, that, that you touch the hearts of your hearers today. 
let your message, let your words just penetrate our hearts, Lord, and transform us inside and out. Let your words accomplish the very purpose that which you have sent it, Lord. Thank you for your word. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may now take your seats. So like I said, we have a new series called The Road Out. Can everybody say The Road Out? Now, there are different kinds of people when, when we talk about um, there are different kinds of people that we want to be with in a road trip. Sino dito mahilig ka sa road trip? Ayan. I see Kuya Kenneth. Ayan. Mahilig yan mag-road trip sa bike. Di ba, Kuya Kenneth? Mahilig tayo. May mga mahilig sa road trip. And I think dito sa Palawan, mahilig talaga tayo kasi ang dami natin pwedeng puntahan pag mag-road trip. We could go to Nagtabon, Talawjong, di ba? Pwede rin tayo mag-El Nido. Six hours nga lang ang biyahe. Pero we can, we can, uh, we can, ride a van or, or a car all the way up to, to El Nido. And there are different kinds of people that you do not want to be with on a road trip. Diba? Sino dito meron kang kilala na ayong-ayaw mo pag, pag nandyan siya sa tabi mo pag, ano, pag may road trip, diba? Uh, kung nandyan siya sa tabi mo, wag mo na lang tapikin. So there are different kinds of people and, and let me just enumerate some of these people and if, if you know someone or if you have ever experienced this, uh, baka makarelate ka, Unang-una, the fast driver. Sino dito ayaw mo sa mga mabibilis mag-drive? Especially pag ano, di ba, pupunta kang El Nido, maraming liku-liku yun. Siyempre, you will be dizzy, you'll, 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 be, you'll be vomiting, baka every five seconds uh, uh, sumusuka ka na, di ba? If you're the driver naman, ikaw naman yung driver sa long road trip, ayaw mo rin yung sleepy head. You don't like someone who is fast to fall asleep kasi siyempre you're driving a long Long road trip, so you want someone who will talk to you. You want someone who will tell you stories. Ayaw mo nang inaanto kasi ikaw, antokin ka rin. Hindi naman pwede yun, di ba? And if you're an introvert naman, opposite naman yung sa'yo, ayaw mo naman yung madaldal. Kung masyadong maraming sinasabi, ikaw hindi mo na alam kung ano yung sasabihin mo kasi. Siyempre, as us introverts, ako, isa, isa ako sa mga yun, gusto ko yung tahimik lang. And ito, um, speaking of... Um, Speaking of madaldal, di ba? The, 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 the terrible DJ. Yan, sino dito yung ayaw mo yung playlist na pineplay niya, di ba? Ako, meron din, uh, meron din akong kilalang mga ganun na, ah, ba't ganito yung music mo? Wag, palitan na lang natin yan. And then there's the small bladder. I fall under this category kasi every now and then kailangan ko mag-CR. And then there's the last, the stranger, di ba? Hindi ayong ayaw mo pag may katabi ka or may kasama kang hindi mo kakilala. Bakit? Kasi he's unknown. He or she is a stranger. You don't know that person. You can't trust that person. You can't connect with that person. You have no relationship with that person. And um, and looking back to the uh, looking back to the book of Exodus. Why did I talk about road trip? Well, the book of Exodus. Um, is actually in Greek is called Exodus. And it literally means the road out. Hence, yung ating series for today. So as we go through the book of Exodus, let's imagine like we're in a road trip. Ayan. So, for example, the road out, diba unang-unang stop natin, the plagues and the purposes. Ito yung mga pinapapag-usapan natin ngayon. And then next, we're gonna take a stop over at God, over the gods of the river. And then, my slight detour lang tayo at God's grace over His people. And then we will see God over Pharaoh. And then, yung last and final destination natin, we will reach God's deliverance. So, first of all, we're going to be talking about the purpose of the plagues. And for us to understand yung binasa, na nat- yung binasa natin by b- uh, verse kanina in Exodus chapter 3, we have to take a step back and look at what happened before that. Kailangan may context tayo. Context is key. So we go back to chapter 1 of Exodus. And a lot of you know this story already, but if it's your first time here and you're not very much familiar with the Bible yet, um, this is the story of Joseph. All right. If we go back to chapter 1, we, we, we learn about uh, Joseph just dying and all that his brothers and all that generation. So see, Joseph, he's the dreamer. And back in the days of Joseph, he was elevated by Pharaoh because he helped save Egypt. And he was a Hebrew. While he was a Hebrew, he was exalted by God. God brought him up and, and uh, gave him a high position in order for him to help save 
Egyptians. But Joseph had died and all his brothers and all that generation. So everyone who knew what Joseph, Joseph did, everyone who knew uh, the, uh, the works of Joseph, how he saved Egypt, namatay na silang lahat. So that includes even the Pharaoh and the Pharaoh next to him and then the Pharaoh next to him. Hindi na nila kilala si Joseph and yung mga ginawa niya para sa Egyptians. So in Exodus chapter 1 verse 7, but the people of Israel were fruitful and increased greatly. So tuloy-tuloy pa rin ang pag um, spread ng Israelites. They continue to spread and they continue to grow exceedingly strong so that the land was filled with them. Now there arose a new king over Egypt who did not know Joseph. Ayan na, may bagong king. Wala siyang alam about what Joseph had done in the past and how he, an Israelite, helped Egypt survive a famine. And in verse 9, he said, And he said to his people, Behold, the people of Israel are too many and too mighty for us. So natatakot na siya sa Israelite kasi dumadami na sila. They might start a coup or uh, they might start uh, a rebellion or they might... Um, um, you might fight against the, the, the empire of, of Pharaoh, of the Egyptians. Come, let us deal shrewdly with them, lest they multiply. And if war breaks out, they join our enemies and fight against us. Yan sinasabi niya na he, let's do something about this. Let us take them down before they do anything. Pero ayaw niya patayin yung mga Israelites, kasi yun nga magagalit sila, or baka they can find a better way to use the Israelites. And what do they do? They exploit the Israelites. In verse 11, Therefore they set taskmasters over them to afflict them with heavy burdens. So naging slaves sila. But the more they were oppressed, the more they multiplied, and the more they spread abroad. So kahit na oppressed sila, kahit na they suffered, all the more lumago at lumago yung uh, nation of Israel or yung, uh, yung people of Israel. So they ruthlessly, in verse 13 to 14, they ruthlessly made the people of Israel work as slaves and made their lives bitter with hard service in mortar and brick, and in all kinds of work in the field. In all their work, they ruthlessly made them work as slaves. So now we jump right back to Exodus 3, and we see that the Israelites are now slaves by Egypt. And, and now here we are, we're going to talk about the purpose of the plague. So, sino dito alam niyo yung plagues uh, in the Bible, diba, in Exodus, diba, um, Moses and the plagues, if God sends the plagues to Egypt in order for him to save his people. Well, we're going to look at why God needed to send these plagues, why God needed to strike Egypt. So after, um, so a little more context, so medyo maraming context, importante kasi yung context. See, Moses, uh, he was an Israelite, and Pharaoh had to send, um, had to send or had to make a decree, rather, that the firstborn sons of the Israelites be thrown into the Nile River. Kasi palaki na ng palaki ang mga Israelites. So, God had, um, sorry, Pharaoh had to do something about it. And so, all the firstborn of Israelites were thrown into the river, into the Nile, to die. And then, uh, Moses' mother, on the other hand, he saw potential in Moses. He did not want to let go of Moses. And because of his mo- her, her motherly love, she kept Moses hidden for a long time. Pero it was only for a short moment, hindi na maka tiis yung mom, uh, hindi niya ma, sorry, hindi na maptago ng mom niya uh, for such a long time. So eventually, Moses' mom had to release Moses out into the river. So fortunately, uh, Moses was was safely um, safely went to the arms of Fo- Pharaoh's sister. And uh, galing lang kasi ginamit ni Lord yung sister ni Pharaoh to save, to rescue Moses from the river and to care for Moses. So Moses, so uh, just to cut, to make the long story short, Moses grew up and he eventually um, even had a position in Egypt um, one time his eyes were opened, he saw that the, his people were enslaved. He saw that his people were being treated badly, he saw that his people were under oppression. Then one time he saw an Egyptian slaver beating up his fellow Hebrew and then nagalit si Moses. And what Moses did instead of, I don't know, um, 
Siguro, instead of calming down, instead of just thinking things through, he, he succumbed to his anger and he killed the Egyptian slaver. When Pharaoh found out what Moses did, Moses ran away to Midian, the land of Midian. And for 40 years, nandun siya as a shepherd boy. And then here we see the angel of the Lord coming and then a burning bush. And then here's the conversation of the burning bush. A lot of us already know about the burning bush. It's a long, uh, we can talk about that in the future, but uh, God showed himself up uh, to Moses through the burning bush. And the bush wasn't on fire, it was on fire, but it wasn't burning up. And that's uh, how God revealed himself to Moses. Now, through the conversation of Moses and God in the burning bush, we can see the reason and the purpose of the plagues. And we'll look at that and we'll find three purposes why God used the plagues to strike Egypt. And one purpose for the plague is for the deliverance of God's people. So what do the Israelites need saving from? They need slav- saving from slavery, yes. Exodus 3 Verse 7 says, The Lord said, I have indeed seen the misery of my people in Egypt. Encouragement long for you and I that God sees our miseries. God sees us even in our miseries. I have heard them crying out because they're slave drivers, and I'm concerned about their suffering. God hears your cries. Ganun ka kamahal ni Lord that He doesn't just hear your cries, but He collects your tears in the bottle. He loves you so much that He knows every tear, and the reason for every tear. Maybe some of you pasokan na and either, maybe, I don't know, some of you here, you're worried na baka hindi mo matatapos yung school year kasi maybe kulang sa tuition, maybe kulang pambili ng school supplies, or maybe wala kang pambaon, you're, you're worried, how will you finish school? Maybe some of you here, you're also praying, you're praying for a child. And up to this day, you're grieving because maybe, maybe one of you here, you've experienced a miscarriage. And maybe some of you here, you've lost a loved one and you thought that it'd be over, that you'd finally get to move on, but somehow you're still grieving. And some of you, maybe, maybe um, you just got out of a relationship. break lang and... And ang sakit kasi you invested your whole heart for that person. If you are crying right now, know that God hears your cries. And He is concerned for you. He's concerned for your suffering. In verse 8, So I have come down to rescue them from the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them out, up out of that land into a good and spacious land, a land flowing with milk and honey. What does this tell us? That God has a soft heart for His people. But God sees your miseries, He hears your cries, and He is concerned about your sufferings. But He cares for you so much that He will not just leave you in your misery. He will not just leave you in crying all the days of your life. God will take you to a land flowing with milk and honey. He has a promise for you, and you can believe that He will fulfill it. Psalm 34 verse 19 says, Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. So he isn't just concerned about your situation, but he is willing and he is able to free you from it. Question, what is it today that you need freedom from? What do you need freedom from? What is making you cry every night? What is keeping you from worshiping our God? We all have that Egypt in our lives that keep us bondage, that keeps us binded up. So why does God need to deliver his people? Well, so that they can worship and serve God. You see, God doesn't need us, but we need God. So why does God why does God want us to worship him? Well, the worshiping God part is not really for God, it's for us. I don't know about you, but whenever I worship God, whenever I praise Him with song or whether in service or even even in prayer and and when I read the Bible, I I am encouraged. I'm all the more uh, ready and excited to head on the day no matter what the world or what life throws at me. Serving God and worshiping Him, I don't know about you, but it brings joy. 
To me, it does. And I know and I firmly believe it can be for you too if you just experience it. So God's desire in delivering His people is to turn our cries into praise. God wants to convert your tears into cheers. And para medyo ano catchy, kailangan may, may rhyme. No. If you look at verse 12, six times God tells, uh, in look at verse 12, and God said, sorry, I will be with you, and this will be the sign to you that it is I who have sent you. And notice this, when you have brought the people out of Egypt, you will worship God on this mountain. So what does this tell us? This tells us that it's hard to worship God when there's an Egypt that's keeping us binded. There's an Egypt that keeps our hands, our arms down, not being able to raise them up to God. See, God wants to turn those cries into praise. God wants to convert your tears into cheers, but He has to deliver you out of that oppression. What is keeping you from worshiping God? Is it a sin? Is there a sin that's keeping you from worshiping God? Is there a sin that's keeping you from raising your hand and submitting to His Lordship and to His his salvation. What is keeping you from worshiping God? And in, in verse 18, when you jump, it, showed, it's, it says there as well, please let us go a three days journey into the wilderness that we may sacrifice to the Lord our God. Egypt didn't want them to go. Egypt wasn't, Egypt wasn't letting them sacrifice or serve to God. Isn't it difficult sometimes to worship God in our suffering? I don't know if you've ever experienced that. Diba pag, Pag may pinagdadaanan ka, minsan nakakatamad mag-church kasi may pinagdadaanan ka eh. You have no motivation to go to church, you have no motivation to pray, and you don't even have a motivation to read the Bible. But sometimes, pag okay na tayo, pag, pag binless na tayo ni Lord, pag wala na tayong pinagdadaanan, biglang excited na ako mag-church. Excited na ako magbasa ng Bible. Excited na ako. So totoo nga, no? Kasi that's what the, the Israelites are going through right now. They can't seem to worship God. They can't seem to serve Him while they are in bondage as slaves. All they can do is cry. So the question is, how do we serve God even in suffering? Wow, R.C., possible pala yun. Oh, possible. The Bible says it's possible that we can serve God with joy even in the midst of of suffering. Romans 12 verse 12, Paul tells us how we can do it. First, we rejoice in hope. Hope that there is eternal life in heaven awaiting us. If you're a Christian, you believe this, that death is not the final destination. Death is just a stopover, but the real destination is eternal life with Jesus in heaven. If we know that it if we know of that hope, if we've experienced that hope, if we have that hope in our hearts, it's so much easier to rejoice even in the suffering, even in anxiety, even in depression, even in, in struggle. Be patient in tribulation. It doesn't say that Christians will not be experiencing tribulation, but rather, mas malala pa nga minsan pag Christians. Eh. We experience persecution and time and time again, and it's, it makes it much more difficult. And sometimes, you know, doubt enters our minds. But God is telling us to be patient. We wait patiently for Jesus' return. Jesus is coming, and we have to be patient even in tribulation. We be constant in prayer. We pray without ceasing. God wants to hear us. He wants to hear us pray to Him. So we rejoice in hope that there is eternity after life. Be patient even in tribulation, knowing that Jesus will return and we continue to pray. And that will help us serve God even in suffering. Mas may encourage, mas motivate pa rin tayo, even in, even in the oppression. So next point, God sends people to free us from oppression. So God loves us so much that He doesn't want to keep us there in that oppression. God loves us so much that He doesn't want to keep you in that Egypt of yours that's keeping you from worshiping Him. God doesn't leave us there. He guides us through it. And He sends people. Sin is the greatest oppression and cause of suffering. 
but he sends people to free us from it. And as human beings, it is our nature that there is sin in our hearts, crouching in our hearts. It is the greatest oppression that keeps us from worshiping our God, from loving God, and from even believing in God. Exodus 6, verse 12, But Moses said to the Lord, Behold, the people of Israel have not listened to me. How then shall Pharaoh listen to me? For I have of uncircumcised lips. God might be trying to comfort you. God might be trying to save you out of your situation. But you're not opening yourself up to the community. You might be praying, Lord, give me a sign. If you send someone to preach the gospel to me, I will accept. In a agenda sa harap mo, kanina sa 3 to 1 question, kinausap ka na, yun na yung sign. God sends people to save people. I remember, um, I remember when I had my uh, victory weekend. And um, for those of you who don't know, I actually went through victory weekend twice. You don't have to do what I did, but I did that. I went to victory weekend twice. The first time I was one to one, um, I obviously did not listen at all. My second time I went to Victory Weekend, that's the only time I understood salvation and baptism. And what was the reason why that's the only time? Well, because I did not listen at all the first time that I went to one. And it's not anyone's fault, it's just my own because I didn't listen. But God doesn't just send us, diba? Right? But God also calls us to help the oppressed. As Christians, we are called by God to help the oppressed and bring them to the comforting peace of Christ. The only problem is we make a lot of excuses when God calls us to preach the gospel to someone. We make a lot of excuses like, Lord, I'm not eloquent enough. Lord, I'm too slow to talk. Lord, I, am, I don't have the time. Lord, I'm, uh, I'm not wise enough. Di ba kailangan uh, lahat ng books ng Bible, memorize mo from Genesis to Revelation. Lord, I don't even have a memory verse of my own. How am I supposed to help the oppressed? Well, God calls us anyway. And you know what? Moses has been having this, these excuses as well in Exodus chapter 3, verse 11. But Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? My excuse, see, see Moses, who am I? I'm just a nobody. And I like this, this quote by Ian Simskins. He's a, he's a pastor and an influencer. He said, We are not called to simply share the gospel, but we are called to share it with the aroma of Jesus. Sino dito yung mahilig ka sa perfume, di ba? Ako, meron akong perfume pag sa special occasions lang dun ko ginagamit. So yung mga special occasions yun kung kasama ko si Kathy, yeah. Sino so ginagamit ko yung yung perfume na yon tapos ala para alam ni Kati pag oh, ah nandito na si RC di ba ganun Dapat ganun din pag sa atin Maybe we're making excuses because we're not bringing with us the aroma of Jesus Baka di naaamoy sa atin si Jesus pag nilalapitan natin yung mga tao or even when we and even when we think of even approaching anyone we should be ready with the aroma of Jesus so, ang, ang problema is, we're all wearing a perfume. So, anong perfume ang ginagamit mo ngayon? Yun yung tanong eh. Perfume ba ni Jesus yan? Or is that a perfume of guilt and shame? Because guilt and shame will really keep you from preaching the gospel. Is that a perfume of maybe immorality? Maybe there's a sort of immorality in your heart that you haven't given or submitted to the Lord yet. Maybe that's what's keeping you from helping the oppressed from preaching the gospel from being a blessing to others god wants to use you but first he has to free you from those oppressions and you have to wear the perfume of jesus last uh, yesterday i was having victory group with the campus uh, boys and um this uh there's this one time um we were just talking about quotes and uh one of our um uh, one of our friends there, see Jody Valor, he said this. Nux, kinote si Jody, no? Historian and linguist yan si Jody. If Jody's here, I don't know if you're here, but I hope you're here. 
He said, people will never come to acknowledge you until they find something in you worth acknowledging. So if people do not see Jesus Christ in you, then it will be difficult for people to believe you and to acknowledge that what you are preaching is true. So I hope that when you see me preaching here, that you see Jesus Christ in me, even not just on a Sunday, but from Monday to Saturday. Even God, when God already showed himself to Moses through the burning bush, diba? Moses still chooses to make excuses. Dami pa rin excuse ni Moses eh. Nakikita mo na nga si God sa burning bush eh. Isn't that something strange? And isn't that a phenomenon that makes you want to believe in God? Yet he asked the question, who am I? Maybe this is your excuse. Ito yung ultimate excuse mo. Who am I? I'm just a student. Get someone more experienced than me. Diba? Get someone, get a veteran who is more experienced than me. Tapos kung mas, kung mas veteran ako na, sasabihin mo, I'm, I'm too old. Get someone much younger than me. Or maybe you're saying, like what Moses is saying, I'm not a speaker, I'm not a speaker. I'm not eloquent, I'm slow to talk. Send someone else. You know what God said after that conversation? When Moses asked him, who am I? The next thing he, sa- he, asked Jesus, he asked God was, who are you? And you know what God said as a response? He did not answer Moses in the way that he wanted. But God said, I will be with you. I will be with you. And isn't that all we need to know? It's not about who we are, but it's about who is with us. We can obey God not because of who we are, but because of who is with us. So next thing I want to point out is that the purpose of the plagues is for the fulfillment of God's promise. God is a promise-keeping God. Exodus 6, verse 2, God spoke to Moses and said to him, I am the Lord. I appeared to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob as God Almighty. But by my name, the Lord, I did not make myself known. I also established my covenant with them to give them the land of Canaan. Here's God's promise that he will give the Israelites the land of Canaan, a land of their own. And remember, we just talked about Joshua and Caleb two Sundays ago. They saw the promised land. They saw that it was a good place. It was flourishing. But the others saw it as a threat, the the sons of Anna. In verse 5, Moreover, I heard the groaning of the people of Israel, whom the Egyptians hold as slaves, and I have remembered my covenant. You know what? As an encouragement, God's word never changes. If he said he promises this, he will be, he will be faithful to fulfill that promise. Isaiah 40 verse 8 says, The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of God will stand forever. His promise for the Israelites are not just for them, but it's also for us. We too can be delivered out of our own oppression. So what has God promised you? Do you still believe that God can fulfill His promises? Paano, paano, ano yung sinasabi mo, R.C.? Ano ba mga promises ni God? Paano ko malalaman yung mga promises ni God? Well, open the Bible. It's everywhere in the Bible. It's so easy to just... We, we have the internet. Everything's online. You can just type it there. God's promises, marami nang malalabas actually. But here's a few of the promises of God. Isaiah 41 verse 10, maybe God is telling you this, Do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. If you're feeling weak, God says, I will strengthen you. If you need help, I will help you, God says. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Deuteronomy 31 verse 8, The Lord himself goes before you and will be with you. If the God of the universe, the God who created everything is for you, then why are you afraid? He is on your side. Nothing can defeat you now. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Do not be afraid and do not be discouraged. Another promise, John 16, 33, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. If you are, if you are anxious, if you are lonely, if you are depressed, God says there is peace in Jesus Christ. Find peace in Him that in this world you will have trouble. But take heart. Jesus has overcome the world. 
1 Peter 2, 4, He Himself bore our sins in His body on the cross so that we might die to sins and live for righteousness. And for some of you, maybe this is your prayer, maybe this is God's promise that by His wounds you have been healed. And your favorite nothing verse, Jeremiah 29, 11. Sino dito memory verse nyo yan, di ba? For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and the future. So my question now, what is hindering you from, ge- from believing in God's promises? What is hindering you from believing that God will fulfill what He said? What is keeping your unbelief? Today, I hope that we ask God to remove that unbelief from us. And I heard this quote from someone. Um, they said, unbelief is foolishness. It is wickedness. It keeps us from seeing the power of God. And someone told me, unbelief is the root of sin. I said, if you don't believe in God's promises, then you're not trusting in Him. You're not trusting in other things. You're only trusting in other things to save you. You're trusting in your bank account. You're trusting in your relationship to save you. But only God can save you. Unbelief blinds you from seeing God's work in the miraculous. So the problem isn't that God forgot, it's that we forgot God. Maybe we have forgotten God, which is why we don't believe, which is why there's a reason for unbelief. So my question to you, when was the last time you opened God's Word? Sunday, ito, ito pa lang. Nung nagbasa tayo ng Bible. When was the last time you spent time in His Word? And not just really reading it, but understanding it, meditating on it. And a big reason why we don't know Him is because we don't spend time with Him. How do you get to know someone? How do you build a relationship with someone? How do you get to the next level with a friend? Oh, You know more about that person. You invest time with that person. You know, God never forgets His people and He never forgets His promises. He remains faithful to fulfill His promises because He he cares for you. So the question again, who am I? I'm just a nobody. I'm a loser. In fact, I'm only a shut-in. What can I even do? Who am I that God would even bother? Well, God says that I will be with you. And He's telling you right now that you can be new. You can be, you can even be just starting out in church. You can even be just starting out with your discipleship journey. But God says, no matter what you say, I will be with you we can rest assured that God will fulfill His promises because of who He is. And thirdly, and my last point, the revelation of God's identity. This is why God struck Egypt with the plagues. Then Moses said to God, If I come to the people of Israel and say to them, The God of your fathers has sent me to you. And they ask, What is His name? What shall I say then? So why is it important that we know God's name? Well, one thing is that Egypt, in that time, it's a polytheistic nation. Ibig sabihin, marami silang gods. They believe in multiple gods, 2,000 gods, in fact. And there's a god for everything. And all those gods have names. Therefore, it is essential that through God's name, that He shows His power, and He shows that there are no other gods but Him. It's not just that He's above other gods, it's that He is God and He is the only God. And another reason why it's important to know God's name is you cannot follow someone you do not know. Diba? Sino dito, you trust someone that you've only just met once, diba? Mahirap yun. Yesterday in our victory group, I asked our, um, our students, who are you following consistently now? Who are you following consistently? And they all gave their answers. Si Zion gave uh, David Goggins. And kasi fit daw si Zion. Si, si, uh, si Maya, si Tanjiro, di ba Maya? Si Tanjiro daw from, uh, sa mga hindi bagets tulad ko sa anime yun, si Demon Slayer. Yun. Si Jody naman, si Baldwin the Fourth. If you don't know who Baldwin the Fourth is, ako na pa research din ako kung sino ba yan Baldwin the Fourth na yan. Si Baldwin the Fourth pala is a leper king of Jerusalem. And um, 
And si Axel, ito yung pinaka the best na sagot ni Axel. Yung parents niya daw. Nux. Parents niya daw. These are the people that they are following and they know about these people because they've invested time in them. Diba? Jody's been studying about Baldwin IV and he knows uh, information about him. And, and Axel, he can obey his parents because he knows them, he trusts in them. He knows that they have, best in, have a best interest for them. So just like Jody said, diba? you cannot acknowledge someone until there is something worth acknowledging. So who is the God of the Bible and is he worth acknowledging? Do you know God? Well, the personal name of God has revealed to Moses expresses something essential about the attributes and character of God. So see, speaking about attributes, again, let's learn a little bit more about God. Just yesterday, we were in our L113 class and we were talking about the attributes of God. First, that God is transcendent. You know, and what is transcendent? God is transcendent. He can never be fully known. Throughout all eternity, see, the glorified saints will continue to marvel at some new discovery of God's character and nature. But He is above and beyond His creation and exists independent of it. This is all found in Scripture. This is in Isaiah 55, verse 8 and 9. And next, God is imminent. Because God is imminent, He can be understood by finite people. So first, He's transcendent that we cannot fully comprehend who God is. But secondly, God is imminent that we have accurate knowledge about who He is because of that. God is omnip omnipotent. He has all power. And that's, He's going to show that in the plagues, through the plagues over at Egypt. And God is omnipresent. They said, David said in Psalm 139, verse 7 to 8, Where shall I go from your spirit? Or where shall I flee from your presence? If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in Sheol, you are there. It means God is everywhere. Do you know the movie Everything Everywhere All at Once? Si God lang yun. Because God is omnipresent, we can worship Him anywhere. Kahit nasa banyo ka, pwede mo worship si God. Because He's omnipresent. He's omniscient, which means He knows all things. God is immutable, meaning He never changes. His faith is, imp uh, because God is immutable, faith is impossible. I'm sorry, wait. Because God is immutable, faith is possible. Therefore, we can trust in God and in His promises. Because God doesn't change. God doesn't change His mind. Hindi tulad ng tao na madali magbago ang isip. Kaya ang hirap magtiwala sa tao minsan. But God is not like that. He is immutable. And then God is holy. Scripture tells us in Isaiah 6 verse 3, He is absolutely pure and untouched by evil. And God is truthful. It is impossible for God to lie. Because God is truthful, there's no place for anxiety. There's no place for insecurity. Has someone lied to you? Has someone twisted the truth to you? Has someone manipulated you out of, of the lies? And did it cause you anxiety and insecurity? Well, God will never do that. And then God is sovereign, which means He is in full control of everything. The whole universe is under God's very lordship. We can also learn in the story of Moses that there is awe and wonder in his name alone. See, in Exodus 3, verse 14, God replied to Moses. When Moses asked, who are you? God said to Moses, I am who I am. And he said, say this to the people of Israel. I am has sent me. Isn't that strange to tell someone if you're going to introduce them to someone, diba? someone new? For example, may tropa ka dito, kunwari si, si Migi dumating, tapos may kasama akong bagong, bagong taga-church. Uy, Migi, bagong taga-church. Oh, anong pangalan mo? I am. Ah, oh, uh, ikaw. Ah, hindi. I am. Ah, I am. So, magulo, no? It's strange, it's strange. But that's the point. God's name cannot be grasped. It cannot even fit the system of humanity and of our society. Kumbaga, kulang ang vocabulary ng human beings for God to have a perfect description of His name. There is awe and wonder in His name. So God reveals His name to Moses and He says that He is Yahweh. Daniel 4, verse 34 to 35, For His dominion is an everlasting dominion and His kingdom endures from generation 
through generation. He does according to his will among the hosts of heaven and among the inhabitants of the earth. And none can stay his hand or say to him, what have you done? There is awe, there is wonder, and there is power and authority in God's name. So let's look at God's name, Yahweh. You know, three occurrences of I am in this verse all represent forms of the Hebrew verb that means haya, yun, haya, to be. You can imagine when Moses comes to Pharaoh and he introduces God to Pharaoh. Haya is coming. Diba? Sinasabi ni Moses kay Pharaoh. Haya! Anda ka na ba? Diba? Yan na naman, action movie na naman. No? Let's uh, stay away from that. <laughs> stay away from that. <laughs> So, haya is a Hebrew verb meaning to be. So, what does that mean? Well, the name of Yahweh is a clear reminder of God's promises to his people and of his help for them to fulfill their calling. Because the word I am can also be understood and translated as I will be. Which, when we connect to what he said to Moses, I will be with you. God says, I will be with you. Again, God goes back. To Moses by introducing himself that I am and I will be with you. You know, one thing I noticed while I was studying this text is that when God introduced himself to Moses, that was his promise that I will be with you. But it's also a foreshadowing because when Jesus Christ came to this world, his name was Emmanuel and God with us. So while Yahweh is the promise, Emmanuel is the fulfillment. You know, in Jesus, there's redemption with His blood, and in Jesus, there is freedom. Amen? John 8, 42 said, Jesus said to them, If God were your Father, you would love me. For I come from God, and I am here. I came not of my accord, but He sent me. Jesus is talking and affirming that God the Father has sent Him to fulfill His promise. John 8, 12, again, Jesus spoke to them, saying, I am the light of the world. Whoever walks me, whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Are you following Jesus Christ? Because he alone has the light that will guide you out of the darkness that you are in. John 8, 31 to 32. So Jesus said to the Jews who have believed him, if you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples and you will know the truth and indeed the truth will set you free. So do you need freedom today? Is there something that is keeping you binded? Again, I go back to that question. What is oppressing you? What is keeping you from worshiping God? Let's go back. Let's, let's test ourselves. Let's check our hearts. What is keeping us enslaved? So another attribute that I forgot to mention from God, about God is that God is love. God is love. And I can't not put this in there because it's one of his greatest attributes is that God is love. See, he has full control of the world, but still he loves us. So he gives us the decision to cry out to him and to free him from oppression. Or we can just stay binded all our lives and try to remove the chains by ourselves. God is love. John 3.16 For God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn it but in order that the world might be saved through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned but whoever does not believe is already condemned because he has not believed in the name of the only son of God. Again, God who is in full control over the universe is sovereign, but because he loves us, he does not control our decision. It's like the Israelites, God's just waiting for you to cry out for help. God is just waiting for you to call his name, the name of Yahweh. And if you call on his name, he will not force himself upon you, but he will come to you for help. So if you're still wondering, who am I? Who am I God, that God would even consider me? Who am I that God would hear me out? Who am I that God would even get me out of this trouble? I'm nobody. I don't deserve to leave. I don't deserve help. Who am I that God would bring me even to my promised land? And I want to close with this. 
And I just keep repeating this because it's our encouragement for today. God says that I will be with you. I am and I will be with you. He is all that you need. And when you have all of him, then you have all the blessings, spiritual blessings. Again, it's not about you. It's about who you're with. And God is love. Therefore, he loves you to free you from whatever you're enslaved from. So going back to my road trip analogy, we, we have those people that we don't want to be with us. But um, in every road trip, there's always a passenger next to us if we're the ones driving the car. And the question now is, is Jesus already in the car? Is Jesus a passenger in your car? In your road trip, is Jesus there? It doesn't... And it's not enough that Jesus is there in your car. He has to be the one driving your car as well. You might be thinking, I'm going church. I'm going to attend victory group. I'm going to pray. Why am I still crying every night? Why can't I experience joy? Why am I not at peace? Why am I still lost? Well, maybe because you haven't given Jesus access to the steering wheel. So if that's you, and I don't know what you're going through, like what G said kanina, you know, maybe this whole week, what you're going through was piled up and piled up until sobrang bigat na ng pakiramdam mo. You don't know where you're headed. You don't know where this life is taking you. If that's you and you're just feeling lost, then I just want to pray for you right now. If we, can we all just bow our heads? Let's all close our eyes. And you know, if that's you, you've, you've, never, you've never accepted Jesus in your life. In fact, he, he might not even be in your car yet. He's He's not driving your car and he's not even inside your car. He's not taking full control over your life. He's not in your heart where he's supposed to be dwelling. And right now you're just you're just lost. If you're feeling lost, without purpose, without life, that life has no meaning. If that's you and with all eyes closed and all heads bowed down, and you want to receive peace, the peace that transcends all understanding. The Bible says there's peace that transcends all understanding. It's only from Jesus Christ. If that's you and you want that peace, and if you want to receive Jesus in your life, you want to make Jesus drive your life so that he can take you to light and away from the darkness, if that's you, why don't you just raise your hands with all heads bowed down and all eyes closed. If you want to receive Jesus as Lord and Savior of your life, you want to receive Jesus to be the one and only driver of your life. Just raise your hand and I just want to pray for you and I want to let you, we lead you in this prayer. Yes, I see those hands over at the back. Thank you. Yes, I see that hand there. And um, there over at the back as well if, if you want to accept Jesus and God says that if the Son sets you free you are in free indeed so if you want to be free right now from oppression if you want to be free right now from a sin that's keeping you trapped that's keeping you lost right now Jesus wants to free you from that sin Jesus wants to free you from that oppression and for those who are, raising, who are raising their hands, pray this prayer with me. Lord Jesus, I acknowledge that I'm a sinner. And I acknowledge that because of my sin, I am lost. Because of my sin, I am going nowhere. So Lord Jesus, I acknowledge you as well. And I receive you. And I 
receive you into my life. Be Lord over my life. Take full control over my life. I don't want to be lost anymore. I just want you. Thank you, Lord. I receive you. Lord Jesus, forgive me for my sins. Cleanse me of my sins. And lead me to the life everlasting. Right now, I receive you, Lord Jesus, as Lord and Savior of my life. If you accepted that prayer, it just means that you have received the gospel in your life. What the gospel is that because of sin, because of because of sin, we are doomed to to perish. The Bible says that sin is what causes death, and death is the wages of sin. And the Bible says that if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe with your heart that He God raised Him from the dead, you will be saved. And if that was your prayer today, I just want to congratulate you. That is an important prayer probably the most important prayer you've ever prayed and after this service if you prayed that prayer just connect with us and approach any of us so let me pray for everyone here today Lord thank you for your word thank you Lord God for being with us even though we seem to ourselves that we are insignificant Lord the times that life will cause tribulation we will shrink down we will be discouraged but thanks be to you alone Yahweh that that we have your word, that we are encouraged all the day more because of your word. Thank you, Lord, that you are with us. Thank you, Lord, that you will never leave us, you will never forsake us. Thank you, Lord, that today we know a little bit more about you. I pray that as we leave today in this room, that we will have that burning desire to know even more about you. So, Lord, I pray for everyone in this room, in this place, that you send us out, Lord, to be conduits of your light. I pray that you call each and every one of us by name to be a blessing to the oppressed. Lord, I pray that you empower, empower those you have chosen to preach the gospel to those who need to hear it. And Lord, for those who have received the gospel, I pray, Lord God, that you continue to guide them through your saving knowledge. May they experience your miraculous, transformative power. We love you and we honor you and we acknowledge your presence this very morning. We give you back all the praise, all the honor and glory. We love you, we love you, and we praise you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And all of God's people say, Amen. Amen. All right. Thank you, everyone, for um, coming today and hearing God's word. I hope that you were blessed by today's preaching. Hope to see you guys next Sunday. We will continue the series, The Road Out, and we will continue to look into the book of Exodus. So we hope to see you next Sunday. And don't forget, Victory Weekend, September 16 to 17, you can register outside at the admin booth. And we'd love to also, um, we also love to talk to you. Uh, you don't have to leave right away. Connect with us and um, hope to see you all. God bless. And um, have a good Sunday. You